Is it really as simple as calories in versus calories out? The word calories should come with a disclaimer as it's often a controversial topic. Should you count them? Do they even count? Are they all equal? My name is Elle and I'm a registered dietitian and sports dietitian. And in this video, we're going to explore whether you need to be counting your calories and whether it's really as simple as calories in versus calories out. Firstly, what is a calorie? The definition of a calorie is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. But in simple terms, calories are a unit of measurement of energy that our body uses or that a food or drink provides us. When calories are displayed on food labels, they state the energy in terms of kilocalories or kcals. The term kilocalories and calories are often used interchangeably and refer to the same amount of energy. However, in certain countries, energy may be expressed as kilojoules or kj rather than kilocalories. Kilojoules are a different unit of measurement and require a conversion to calories. One calorie equates to 4.18 kilojoules. So for example, 100 kilocalories is 418 kilojoules. What does calories in versus calories out even mean? The concept of calories in versus calories out is commonly spoken about within the fitness space and in the context of weight management, loss or gain. Calories in versus calories out is a simplified way of explaining that in order to maintain your weight, the calories that you consume from food should equal the number of calories that your body uses. According to this view, it also means that weight loss or weight gain is solely determined by the balance between energy intake and energy expenditure. But is it really that simple? Firstly, let's think about the accuracy of actually measuring the calories we consume and the calories that we use. Fitness trackers and calorie tracking apps estimate the amount of energy that your body uses and depending on your goals, may suggest a certain number of calories are required. When apps and other fitness trackers dictate a figure to follow, it is often based on population averages, with most of them only asking a limited number of lifestyle questions, making it difficult to accurately recommend the energy requirements of an individual. The most accurate way of measuring the amount of energy that an individual requires is through a technique known as direct calorimetry, which measures the rate of heat loss using a calorimeter. This is very rarely used due to its high cost, but also because of the practicalities of it. Estimation equations are thought to be good enough to use as an indicator for how much energy the body may need. However, it's really important to appreciate that the body's energy requirements change every day. Energy requirements are not just dictated by how active our lifestyles are, but will also be influenced by our sleep if we have any illnesses and based on our individual body composition and genes. Fluctuations in hormones can also influence energy requirements. For example, various studies have found that during the luteal phase of the menstrual cycle, women can experience up to a 20% increase in their metabolic rate as a result of the increase in progesterone. These are all things that go on within the body that we cannot see or that trackers can measure and accommodate for. So it's really important to be flexible and accept that energy requirements of our body will shift. The calories that we consume are also based on estimations. The only way to confirm the amount of calories a food can provide us is to put it in a bomb calorimeter, which is a container that measures the heat generated by a food when it is burned. So the figures on the back of packets are based on averages rather than actual individual measurements for each food. There is a legal allowance for calories on packets to be up to 20% inaccurate. This means that the energy that the food may actually provide can be 20% more or less than the number of calories listed on the packet. But even if we did have an accurate measure of how many calories are in a given food, we don't know exactly how much each of us is going to absorb and extract from that food. In order to obtain calories from the foods we eat, they need to be digested so that the nutrients can be absorbed. All foods are broken down differently, and things like processing and cooking can actually change the digestibility of foods. For example, research suggests that only about 70% of the calorie content of almonds is absorbed, whereas the calories from almond butter are more likely to be absorbed as it is simpler to digest. And digestion itself is a process that costs energy, which usually accounts for about 10% of the overall energy that the body requires requires each day. This is referred to as the thermic effect of food, which is a measure of how much different foods increase energy expenditure due to the energy required to digest, absorb, and metabolize the nutrients. For example, proteins are thought to require up to five times more energy to digest in comparison to carbohydrates and even more than fats. More evidence is also emerging that the gut microbiota, which is the collection of bacteria that live in the gastrointestinal tracts, can play a role in influencing how much energy is extracted from 
from food. There are two bacteria dominant in the gut, bacteriodetes and firmicutes. And an imbalance in these bacteria has been shown to alter the amount of calories and nutrients that are extracted from foods and can lead to increased storage of triglycerides in adipose tissue, as well as a slower release of hormones that regulate appetite. And that could promote a higher food intake. Fiber is usually not broken down during digestion, but it can be metabolized by certain species of bacteria within the gut microbiome through a process known as anaerobic fermentation. As the gut microbiome have an ability to break down these typically indigestible polysaccharides, the amount of energy that can be extracted from the diet increases, with researchers expecting this to represent up to 10% of daily energy intake. More high quality studies are required to further establish this link, but it does reiterate that there are certain things that go on within our body every day that we probably don't realize impact the amount of energy that our body needs and uses. All of which food labels, calorie tracking apps, and fitness trackers do not account for. As a dietitian, one of the biggest misunderstandings that I hear is that people believe that low calorie equals healthier or better, and this isn't always the case. Reduced calorie or low calorie variations of food are achieved by reducing a certain nutrient within that food, like the fat or the sugar content, and usually replacing it with things like artificial sweeteners or other agents to improve the texture and taste. Certain sweeteners can cause digestive discomfort for some individuals, and there is research emerging that high intakes of artificial sweeteners within the diet may alter our gut microbiome, which is the collection of bacteria in our digestive system that are important for our digestion, our immunity, and our absorption of nutrients. However, the research on this is still inconclusive, and most of the studies have been in animals. Removing or reducing certain nutrients in a food can mean that it is less satisfying, both physically and mentally. For example, fat is a highly satiating nutrients and low fat variations of things like yogurt are thought to be less filling than their original products. Low calorie versions of food can taste differently too, which may result in the eating experience being less enjoyable, leaving an individual feeling dissatisfied. Calories are not the same as nutrients. The amount of calories in a food gives us an insight as to how much energy that food can provide us, but this does not tell us how nutritious a food is. Even when a food or meal provides the same amount of calories as another, they can have very different impacts on our energy levels, our health, and how we feel. This is often where we hear the phrase, calories are not created equally. For example, a donut may have a similar amount of calories to a chicken and grain salad bowl. Having the salad bowl rather than the donut is likely gonna provide us with a bit more protein and fiber than the donut would, which will help to keep us fuller for longer. This doesn't make the donut bad for you or that the chicken salad is better, but it highlights that just because foods are similar in calories, they can still offer a different range of nutrients. Whilst our body does need energy, it requires specific nutrients for optimal functioning too. Focusing solely on quantity of calories rather than quality of nutrients could lead to not getting enough of the nutrients that we need, like protein and essential fatty acids, or having too much of the nutrients that we want to limit, such as trans fats. I'm not saying that counting calories is all a waste of time, as close estimations can be better than no knowledge at all. Calorie counting can be a helpful tool for some individuals to create an awareness around the amount of calories that they are consuming. This doesn't necessarily help people to make healthier food choices as calories are different to nutrients, but it may guide an individual to fuel their body appropriately. But as we can see, fluctuations in energy requirements are going to happen, and this is where relying on calorie counting apps to tell you what to eat and how much to eat and when to eat can be unhelpful. The body will try to account for these changes in energy requirements through increasing hunger signals, and this can be really frustrating for someone who's trying to religiously count their calories and stick to a certain number. Calorie counting is usually not not recommended as a long-term strategy for health or weight management, and there is evidence that counting calories can increase the likelihood of developing a disordered relationship with food. There is a lot more to food than calories and nutrients. Food should be enjoyed, it's part of celebrations and social occasions, and seeing it as simply numbers is not helpful or necessarily healthy. The concept of calories in versus calories out completely simplifies weight management and fails to account for the fact that humans are not textbooks. It can make people feel disheartened, as in practice, it's not actually as easy as it sounds. There is so much more that impacts our weight than just the food we eat and how much we move, like genetics and illness. It is 
certainly not as simple as calories in and calories out. Calories are not the same as nutrients and the quality of our diet plays a large role in relation to our overall health. Counting calories alone can detract from ensuring that we are getting the right balance of nutrients that our body needs to function optimally. This doesn't mean that calories don't count because it is important to ensure that we are supporting our body's energy requirements appropriately. However, we don't necessarily need to be counting our calories. Our body can regulate our energy intake on its own. So, I hope that this video helped to clear that up. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave them in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe to the MyProtein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.